Dear Lola, The first thing I noticed the day you were born were hyacinths. They had been tight buds the day before, but as I pulled up the blinds, their scent rose and came towards me. They must have opened in the moonlight. I didn't know hyacinths could do that. I had no experience of gardening, and those bulbs were the first I had ever planted. Until that moment, I doubted they would even flower. But seeing such abundance at that early hour, I thought, yes, this is what they mean when they talk of peace. I went out into the spring dawn in bare feet. Then, wrapping the stems in damp cotton wool, I carried them with great care to the hospital. It was my way of welcoming you into the world. A tribute to your new life. The first of many, I hoped. And as I set the heavy blooms in some water, I noticed a postcard of Piero's nativity lying beside your cot. Yes, I thought, dazzled by happiness. Yes. I did not think of it as an omen of what was yet to come. For in my excitement, I had forgotten what they told me when I was a boy. How it had been written in the stars that one day, every part of my world would vanish in an instant. Your arrival, Lola, signified peace, you see. In my mind, at least. You, Lola, were its messenger. Because of you, I was certain everything would now be fine. What a burden to give a tiny child. That morning, of course, you were oblivious to my journey across the city. Ignorant of the history I was about to thrust on you. As for me, I was simply happy to be revisiting old memories. I remember a yellow truck. Rice served with onions. A plastic tablecloth. Sunlight on saffron. Grief. Stories from long ago. Do you know I am in Italy? Or that yesterday I stumbled across an abandoned hospital where evidence of its past life lay strewn around in astonishing disregard for what was lost. For some reason, perhaps because once it must have been filled with children's voices, I went inside and wandered around for hours. It brought to mind that other day in June, when hurrying to your side, it wasn't birds I heard singing, but the dawn chorus of a busy teaching hospital. <laughs> the clatter of trolleys on polished floors, cups and saucers tea being poured, the sound of footsteps, curtains being drawn, fresh flowers brought in, withered ones, a reminder of all that passes being removed.
while high on a rafter, memories fluttered in distress as unexpectedly I came across a menu pasted on a wall. August 1944. Risotto al fungi, it said. And I thought of those silent corners where the shadows slept discreetly screened from prying eyes with stainless steel beds waiting for the sole purpose of welcoming the dead. And I remembered thinking that even as you lay taking in the air, other lungs were breathing out their last. The thought served only to increase the miracle of your presence. For had you not been born in spite of all the odds? How far that little candle which was my life had thrown its light. All things were in this way illuminated. Love, I suppose, made me think it so. too late. I am writing you this letter. My first. To tell you, forgetting was never an option. To say, strangest of all discoveries, were the copies of your favorite picture postcard I found scattered on the ground, trampled on, marked, tossed in amongst the rubble and the dust. One bird for one sorrow, we used to laugh. I picked one up and put it in my pocket, my heart swelling with regret for what was lost. It was late when I finally left. The light was fading fast. Church bells reminded me that in England you would be returning home from school, hungry. And all at once, with horror, I remembered the date. How could I have forgotten it? So now I ride to tell you of that building by the sea and the long grass whispering in the breeze, and sudden openings letting in glimpses of blue light, a line of sea, a vesper traveling in lazy pursuit of fun, halcyon days, the sort that one day will be yours, I hope. In a nearby restaurant, a woman's face emerged from 400 years of history as she drained her coffee. And in a bus queue, there she was again and again. The Renaissance is everywhere, not just whispering in the trees. I traveled on, past olive trees. It was on these ancient waterless hills the artist lived out his life, painting what he saw until the very end. Later, 
I saw a field of sunflowers. Miles and miles of them. Growing, drying, turning with the sun, dying of their own accord. Old habits made me scan the ground. Eyes lowered, fearful of decapitated young limbs, hatchet jobs, shrapnel from killer mines. But no, there was nothing. Only the murmur of cicadas disturbed an otherwise total silence. Yes, this was peace. In this way I neared the frescoes with sadness in my heart. The tropical sun is a sword on flesh, but here the heat is gentler. found that ancient church touched with Arezzo's gold, cast in ochre darkness. And staring upwards towards the light, I saw for the first time Scipio still dreaming through eternity. Look how the Queen of Sheba walks among her olives. Here is a wood for crucifixion. My mother knew a woman living at the crossroads plotting horoscopes, mine included. Lies, all lies, we thought then. Outside the church, a white dove flew into the heat. Light folds through ancient glass. An immigrant Lola is just a ghost. A ghost traveling through time with little purpose and no hope. Not for him the hallowed gaze on Western art. His preoccupations lie elsewhere. How does a ghost approach a painting? Yet standing before this enigmatic gem, I caught a sudden glimpse of some other dimension as in a flash the last piece of my life locked into place. Only peace delivers peace, I thought. In this oasis of calm, in gilded silence and art, my perspective sharpened, revealing many truths. Here it was then, unchanged by the centuries, distilled down and concentrated on a perfect afternoon in June, with the sun so gentle. Here was the thing I had until now only intuited. It is history, Lola, that makes you easy with yourself. History that gives you certainty in all you do. Escape is never enough. Escape merely leaves you looking in on other people's treasures, belonging nowhere. So 
For with this in mind, I am sending you the card of your favorite image of our history together. And also with this letter, I am sending you my birthday wishes. Happy 17th birthday, daughter.